Episode 141, Thinking About Her. What he was worried about now were her back and ankle. Your back and your ankle. Megan just remembered her strained back and a twisted ankle, but she had already jumped out and picked up the call. It would be awkward if the condition had relapsed. Eh? It's not hurting anymore. Megan moved her back wiggled her feet, and smiled. Mr. Wilson, it's amazing. I took a nap, and it's all fine now. That's good. Connor was relieved. Mr. Wilson, where are we going now? Megan asked as she looked out of the window and saw a sparkling night view of the city. We were supposed to go to the hospital. I'm fine now. We don't have to go to the hospital anymore. Then let's go home. Connor instructed the pilot to change route through the intercom, and they flew straight back to Brooklyn Heights. The helicopter safely landed, and everyone got off. Megan pushed Connor back to the apartment. A big truck was parked in front of the apartment, and there were people moving items in and out of number 104. Megan asked curiously, "'Someone's moving at this time of night?' Connor was indifferent." It may be a new neighbor. Each level had four units. Connor stayed in number 101 and had bought the adjacent number 102 and 103 for some peace and quiet. Number 104, which he hadn't bought, seemed to have someone moving in. The occupants of Brooklyn Heights were usually people with certain backgrounds, often either rich or powerful, who would be moving into number 104. Megan opened the door to number 101 and pushed Connor in. The room smelled fresh and it felt great to be home. They closed the door and Connor took out a new pair of slippers from the shoe cabinet and placed them in front of her. Megan, you'll wear this pair from now on. Did you just buy this for me? Megan sounded surprised. The new pair of slippers still had a rabbit design, but they were much cuter than the previous ones. Yes, Connor nodded. Layla had ruined Megan's rabbit slippers the last time, so he bought another pair for her again. They were specially bought for her. They're really suitable and adorable. I like them a lot. Thanks, Mr. Wilson. Megan tried on the slippers and looked in the mirror. Not only were they fitting, but they looked really good as well. Looking at Megan's smile, Connor felt sweeter than if he'd eaten honey. Just as Connor was closing the shoe cabinet door, Megan surprisingly saw a pair of small slippers with a piggy design. She turned and asked, "'Whose slippers are those?' "'They're for Cherry. She may be able to use them if she comes to my house in the future.'" Connor was extremely considerate. Megan could not help but give him a thumbs up. Mr. Wilson, you are just too sweet. If Cherry hears that you were thinking about her and even bought slippers for her, she will adore you. (laughs) Connor laughed. He wasn't sure why, but upon the thought of Cherry Baby's cute little face, he always turned soft and could not help but think of treating her even better. Tomorrow will be the fan meetup between Cherry Baby and Abe's son, Patrick. (sighs) If it wasn't for the inconvenience of my wheelchair and the fact that I'm a public figure, I would definitely join in. On Sunday morning, Megan drove to the Johnson family mansion to fetch Alice. Alice was wearing a red hoodie and there was a pair of cute little ears on the hood. Red really complimented Alice's skin color. She really looked like a cute little cherry wearing red. The little girl shook her head with an adorable expression. It was especially cute. The reason for wearing a red cartoon hoodie to the fan meetup was a discussion between Candy Prince and Alice about ensuring that she would be easily recognizable. The venue was at New York theme park. Megan fetched her daughter and drove straight to the theme park. 
They agree to meet at the KFC next to the theme park entrance. Abe and his wife, Jenna, were waiting there with their son, Patrick. The family of three was keeping a lookout over the crowd. Patrick wore a red hoodie and black track pants. He had handsome features and looked especially dashing. The little one had inherited the merits of his parents and would definitely be very attractive when he grew up. Amidst the crowd, an adult and a child wearing masks appeared. Patrick saw that the little girl was wearing the same red hoodie as he was and immediately recognized her. He pointed excitedly. Dad, Mom, look! Cherry Baby is here! Where? Where? Abe and Jenna looked towards the direction their son pointed and saw a lady holding on to a little girl wearing red. As they walked nearer, Patrick walked up excitedly. Hey, little Cherry, I'm here! Alice was very happy too when she saw Patrick. Patrick, why are you here? Patrick ran over happily and bent down to look straight into Alice's eyes. I've been waiting for you. Alice saw his red shirt and realized, Wow, Patrick is Candy Prince? Yes, that's right. Patrick nodded happily and pat on his chest. He was wearing the cartoon pin on the left side of his chest and treated it preciously. Patrick, are you alone? Alice asked curiously. Nope, I came with my mom and dad. They are over there. Patrick pointed to Alice. Abe walked over with his wife and greeted Megan. Hi, we are Candy Prince's parents. I'm Abe, and this is my wife, Jenna. Nice to meet you. Everyone who had watched Cherry Baby's live streaming was curious as to what Cherry Baby's mom looked like. What kind of woman must she be to have such an adorable and smart child? Abe was also curious and asked, Are you Cherry Baby's mom? Before Megan could answer, Alice explained, She's not my mummy. My mummy can't come today. Alice remembered what the adults had told her, not to call Megan mummy in public. It would not be good for her mummy. The best way to protect her mummy was to say she was not her mummy. Hi, Mr. and Mrs. Hannibal. Cherry's parents are busy today, so they entrusted me to accompany the child. Megan explained. The couple expressed their understanding. As Megan was wearing a mask, Abe did not recognize her, nor did he recognize her voice. Abe bent down to speak to Alice. Hi, little Cherry. Alice looked at Abe and then looked at Jenna and said, Hi, I'm Cherry Baby. I have been curious why Patrick is so good looking. Now that I've seen handsome uncle and pretty aunts, I believe the power of genes. Praising three people with one compliment, her IQ is really high. Episode 142 It's Such a Miracle. The little girl's words flattered the two adults and they giggled. Her skills of complimenting others were impressive. Megan was observing the couple. Abe wore a dark red suit and looked dashing. Jenna wore a pink dress and looked graceful. The two of them matched. She remembered seeing Abe at Grandpa Wilson's birthday party and felt that he really resembled her previous boss, Harvey. Seeing him within close distance today, they looked even more similar. Megan could not help but ask, "'Pardon me for asking, Mr. Hannibal. Do you know Mr. Harvey?' Abe was stunned. He looked up and at Megan. "'You are?' Megan removed her mask to reveal her face briefly before putting it on again. Abe recognized Megan and was surprised. Megan? Why would Megan be accompanying Little Cherry? This is suspicious. Should I report this to Connor? But right now, Abe had to cover up his lies. Miss Megan, hi. Of course, I know Harvey. He's my twin brother. Do you find the two of us similar? Yeah, I just did not expect that you guys would be twins. Megan finally had her questions answered. 
Patrick saw that the adults were chatting. He held onto Alice's hand and said, Mom, Dad, you guys continue chatting. I'm going to go play with Alice. The seven-year-old Patrick was much taller than the four-year-old Alice. He acted like a young adult and brought Alice to the ticketing entrance. Let's go in too. We bought tickets for the two of you already. Abe passed the tickets to Megan and she quickly followed behind the two children. Abe held his wife's hand and walked behind. Jenna asked quietly, Since when did you have a twin brother that I did not know of? I'll explain when we go back. Abe chuckled and gave his wife a look of mutual understanding. At the same time, he took a photo of the backs of the people in their group and sent it to Connor. He cheekily added a comment. Connor, I'm currently out with two pretty ladies and one pretty girl. Don't disturb me unless necessary. Abe bought the full access pass where they could play and ride all rides for free. Patrick acted like a host and walked in front of Alice. He considerately asked Alice what she wanted to play with. No matter what she said she wanted to play with, he would agree readily and accompany her. For rides that required adult accompany, Megan would accompany the children. She would sit at the bench during rides that the children could ride on their own. Megan realized Alice seemed to like Patrick a lot and was especially obedient next to Patrick. She rarely acted like that. Alice was actually a sensitive child. She became unwilling to play with other children after being mocked for not having a dad and being illegitimate. However, today, she did not reject Patrick. She even happily played with him. It was such a miracle. At Brooklyn Heights, Connor received the photo Abe sent. When he recognized Megan in the photo, he got fidgety. Especially when Abe daringly added a message. Connor, I'm currently out with two pretty ladies and one pretty girl. Don't disturb me unless necessary. Hmm. I'm not going to disturb you. I'm going to bash you up. Connor couldn't help but curse at Harvey. Seriously, that guy? It's already unforgivable that he went out with Alice and did not invite me. And now my lady is with him? How dare he try to make fun of me? Connor quickly grabbed his stuff and went to the door, determined to call off his friendship with Harvey. But just as he flung the door open, he was almost scared to death by a person standing in front of it. The person was covered in charcoal and had an afro on her head. What the hell? Ghost in bright daylight? Oh, my good little brother. Layla stood in front of him and cried. You have to help me out. What's wrong? Connor replied with a look of disdain on his face. What's with the timing? Could you not show up when I'm about to leave? Don't you know my time is very important? Don't you care that my future just might be ruined? You have to teach me how to cook. Layla sobbed. I've tried so hard and even bought a dozen recipes. But no matter how hard I try, I can't make anything. Look at me. I almost burnt myself up. Duh, Connor scolded. You're only born to eat, not to cook. Oh, and you still haven't paid me back for what you did to my kitchen last time. You're right. I'm only good at eating and tasting foods, Layla agreed. Asking me to cook is asking me to take a leap off a ten-story building. Then why are you even trying? Connor asked. How he wished his sister would leave him alone so that he could go and find Megan. I have to, Layla said. I boasted in front of Mr. Wood last time that I know how to cook. I'll have to learn how to do it. If he doesn't like me because a pretty and talented woman like me doesn't know how to cook, then I'm doomed. All of this for Becky? Since when did you become a pretty and talented woman? What's with the Mr. Wood? Since when did he fall in love with you? He never even loved you once. Don't be a narcissist. If you want to learn how to cook, I can recommend a place where you can learn, Connor said. What place? A uh, new place, Connor said with a pause between each word. 
Hurry up and get packed. I'll take you there. Connor said, noticing that Layla was spacing out. They even offer accommodations. You'll definitely be able to master how to cook. It was as if Layla had woken up from a dream as she grabbed Connor's wheelchair. No, no, no. Layla shouted, I'm not going there. If my friends learned that I went to some cooking school, they'd definitely laugh at me. I'm not going. Then what do you want? Connor asked with a sigh. Episode 143, Teach Her a Lesson. My good little brother, Layla cried as she fell to the ground and begged. You have to teach me how to cook. I can be your disciple. I don't need you to teach me everything. Just a few dishes would be enough. Please. Connor's face was as dark as it could get. Look at her. She's like a high school girl all over again. I'll have to teach her a lesson. Sis, I have to tell you something, Connor said. I'm listening, Layla replied. Becky would never fall for someone like you. You better not waste your time on him. What? Why? Layla asked as she stood up in panic. Why wouldn't he like me? What kind of girl does he like then? She has to be pretty, generous, has a good temper, be straightforward, loyal to others, Connor said while he thought of Megan. Oh, and she has to know music and be skilled in the culinary arts, too. Connor thought that after he'd stated all the good about Megan, his sister would know the difference and give up. That's totally me, right? Layla replied as her eyes shone. You... Connor replied as he looked at Layla from top to bottom and wondered where she'd gotten her confidence from. Yep, Layla nodded. Look at me, pretty and talented. I've never even bitten back when you've scolded me, and I'm generous with my cards, too. I've never ever believed any scandals about you, which means I'm loyal. I can whistle better than you. But with cooking... Layla stopped for a moment and scratched her chin. As long as you could teach me, then I would be good at it, right? Layla continued, Come on, teach me. My future depends on it. Connor couldn't help but slap his forehead. What crime did I commit in my past life to get such a sister? Please, you have to help me. Layla begged as she dropped to the ground again and hugged Connor's legs. If you don't, then I'll stay at your door until you're willing to teach me. With how Layla was acting, there was no way for Connor to leave his home that day. All right, Connor sighed and turned towards his room. I'll go get a blanket for you. Wait, I was just joking about the last part. Is he serious? Is he really getting me a blanket? The hell? Is he really my brother? Alice and Patrick were having fun at the theme park. All five of them went to have lunch at the KFC in the park. They continued to play until three in the evening when Megan said they had to leave. Mom, can we play a little longer? Alice asked as she still wanted to stay. No, we have to go. Megan said as she shook her head. All right, then. Alice said and turned to look at Patrick. Auntie Megan, Patrick called out as he struggled free of his mother's hand. Can I still play with Alice in the future? Of course you can, Megan said while rubbing Patrick's head. We'll find some time and get together, okay? Okay. Patrick nodded happily as he couldn't wait for the next time he could meet Alice. Megan explained the situation to Abe and his wife. Come on, say goodbye to them, Megan said to Alice while holding her hand. Goodbye, handsome uncle and pretty auntie, and you too, my little prince, Alice said while waving her hands. They began walking away. Yet after they'd walked for a few steps, Alice struggled free of her mother's hand and ran to Patrick's side. She lifted herself higher and landed a kiss on Patrick's cheek. 
It was a resounding kiss that even the adults could hear. The little girl ran back to her mother's side before Patrick could even react. Patrick almost fainted from happiness after he got the kiss. He had been too immersed in playing with Alice and had forgotten about their promise. He would never expected Alice to keep her promise and give him a kiss before she left. Oh yeah, looks like I'll have to stop washing my face for a month. Patrick sent Alice and Megan off with his eyes until he couldn't see them anymore. He turned depressed in an instant and had no interest in playing any games. I've never felt this bored before, Patrick sighed. I've only realized that being alone is so boring now that Alice has left. Abe and Jenna heard their son sigh and looked at each other in awe. Did we just hear those words coming from a kid's mouth? It really sounds like it came from someone who's deeply in love. Hey, Jenna, Abe called out to his wife as he suddenly thought of something. Don't you think that Cherry Baby looks a little like Connor? More than a little, Jenna replied. I really thought that she was Connor's kid when I first saw her. They have the same dimples when they smile. It's like looking at a picture of him. Jenna had wanted to ask Abe ages ago, but didn't know how to begin. Now that her husband had started the topic, she didn't hold in her astonishment any longer. Yeah, even Connor was surprised when he first saw her live stream too, Abe said, grabbing his wife's shoulders. It would be good if he had a daughter like her. At least he wouldn't have to worry about getting an heir. He really has it rough, huh? Jenna sighed. Things don't look good for him at the company because of his condition, Abe said with a worried face as he knew much about the internal affairs as the head legal advisor for Talentex Entertainment. A bunch of shareholders is trying to make Peter the next CEO. As a spectator, Abe had already seen the thirst for power in Peter's eyes. He was worried about what Peter would do to Connor to achieve the power that he desired. What kind of people are they? How dare they push him to the side because of his legs? Jenna scolded. When that time comes, you better help Connor out. I know. Abe replied, he didn't need Jenna's reminder to know what he should do. He and Connor had been friends since they were small, and he would even risk his own life to save Connor. Even when Peter had tried to get Abe on his side, he'd never yielded. Episode 144, Mummy's Rival the little cutie sat in her seat without moving on their way back home as she was tired from playing the whole day. Did you have fun today? Megan asked as she looked at the little girl in her rear mirror. Yep, Alice replied with her cute voice. Do you like playing with Patrick? Yes, he's really good to me, Alice nodded. He did not make fun of me for having no father. I like playing with him. How about Uncle Dimple? Do you want to go and see him? Megan asked as she suddenly linked Connor to the word father. Yes, Alice replied enthusiastically as soon as she heard that she could go and play with Connor. I want to go. He's the greatest uncle in the world. Then how about we go to his house now? Megan said as she also wanted to go see him but couldn't find any reason to. Uncle Dimple has bought a pair of cute little slippers for you. Really? Alice said. Then let's go, Mom. Okay, sit tight then. Megan smiled and cheered in her heart. Oh yeah, I can always use Alice to get to meet with my Prince Charming. I'm so smart. They arrived back at Brooklyn Heights around four in the evening. Just as they were about to get out of the car, Megan got a call from the set. Mom, I'll go first, Alice said as she jumped out of the car. I remember how to get to Uncle Dimple's house. Okay, Megan said. Remember, it's room 101. I remember. Uncle Dimple lives beside you. 
Alice closed the door and ran into the building. Megan saw Alice off and picked up her call. The neighborhood they were in could only be afforded by people loaded with money. The security was as tight as it could be. Megan wasn't worried to let Alice go alone. The little girl ran up to room 101 and tried to push the bell, yet she wasn't tall enough to reach it and she could only knock on the door. After a few seconds, the door opened and a person came out. Uncle Dimple, Alice greeted without looking at who it was. Layla opened the door and couldn't find anyone standing outside until she heard someone shouting from below. She lowered her head and there stood a little girl. The little girl was wearing a red shirt that covered her pale white skin. Her face was round with big eyes. The little girl was cute enough to melt anyone's heart. Layla noticed that the girl had dimples almost as if they were the same as Connor's. Little one, who are you? Layla asked in surprise. Alice originally wanted to give Connor a surprise. She had not expected a beautiful woman to open the door. Since Alice was more mature than kids that were around her age, she thought that the woman was Connor's girlfriend. Uncle Dimple told me that he doesn't have a girlfriend. Then who is this woman? Uncle Dimple is a liar. The smile on the little girl's face disappeared, and she lowered her face. And who are you? Alice asked. Alice had always wanted her mother to be together with Connor. In her eyes, Layla was her mother's rival. Alice even saw Layla as her enemy, and there was no way that she was going to treat her enemies as friends. Yet, Layla was deeply interested in the little girl, as she was curious about her identity. Come, let me see you clearly, Layla said as she opened her arms and tried to hug Alice. No, Alice said, taking a few steps back. You are a bad guy. Alice turned and ran away. Who's out there? Connor suddenly shouted. Who are you talking to? The little girl was already in the wind as Layla still looked out at the hallway, wondering if she was an illusion or not. There's a kid who knocked on the door, Layla replied. I think she got the wrong house. What did the kid look like? Connor asked as he wheeled himself into the living room. About as tall as a chair, Layla described. She was wearing a red shirt and her face was round and plump. Oh, she has dimples like yours too. Connor instantly thought of Alice after listening to his sister's description. She must have left after she couldn't find me. Connor quickly rushed past Layla and opened the door, but the little girl was already long gone. Why didn't you ask her to stay? Connor asked angrily. I did, Layla protested, but she called me a bad guy and left. You must have scared her, Connor scolded. He was really angry. Layla had seriously interrupted his life. He couldn't help but worry how depressing it was for the little girl to come to his house happily, only to leave in disappointment. I didn't, Layla said, acting innocent. Yeah, right, Connor said. Your face could even scare away ghosts. Please don't come to my house anymore. Connor was furious. Layla had barged into his home, begging him to teach her to cook. And yet, after hours of teaching and cooking, Layla hadn't even learned anything other than how to fill her stomach. She couldn't even open the door for a little kid properly. Come on, little brother. You'll hurt my heart if you say it like that. Layla said with a smile on her face, but that little girl has the same dimples as you. I wouldn't even think twice if you told me that she was your daughter. Connor did not reply to her. Come on, spit it out. Is she your illegitimate daughter or something? Layla asked. Enough, Connor shouted. So what if we have the same dimples? Does that make her my daughter? Do you know how many people with dimples are out there? Are they related to me too? Can you think before you speak? Connor was breathing heavily and his eyes were red after scolding his sister. Layla was intimidated by her brother. She'd never thought that her easygoing brother would ever get that angry. I was just joking. Man, that's scary. I better leave.
Episode 145, The Little Girl Was Hurt. Come on, little brother, don't get angry, Layla said as she picked up her bag. I have a date I have to get to. You'll have to teach me to cook some other time. Bye. Like hell, there will be another time. You better not come again, Connor shouted and threw his slipper towards Layla. Layla quickly closed the door to block the shoe. You shouldn't throw stuff like that, Layla said, opening the door a little. Even if you can't hit me with that, you might hit the plants you have here. Leave, Connor shouted, and this time he threw a huge pillow at her. Layla quickly left, and Connor finally could get some peace. After he'd calmed down, he began to worry about the little girl. Is she still with Megan and Olivia? Megan finished her call and was about to get out of the car when she saw Alice running out from the building. The little girl ran straight into her mother's hug and kept crying. What's wrong? Why are you crying? Megan asked. Yet the little girl just kept crying as she wiped her tears with her hands. Are you crying because Uncle Dimple is not at home and you don't get to see him? Megan asked while wiping the tears off her daughter's face with a tissue. Alice nodded, then quickly shook her head. Okay, don't cry, my little girl, Megan said as she hugs Alice and patted her head. We'll come again when he's home, okay? Mummy, Alice finally spoke after a few minutes. Let's leave. Alice would only call Megan mummy when they were in private or when she was really hurt. The last time she'd called Megan was when she was bullied by a bunch of kids. Megan couldn't help but feel hurt when she heard her daughter call her that. All right, get in the back, Megan said with a pain in her chest. I'll take you back to Great Grandpa's house. Alice went into the back seat and Megan helped her to put on her seatbelt. On the way back, Megan kept checking the rear view mirror while Alice looked out the window with her eyes reddened from crying. Can you tell me what happened? Megan asked in a soft voice. I thought Uncle Dimple was different than other men, Alice said, but he's no different from them. They are all the same. They are all liars. Megan couldn't help but hit the brakes, surprised by what came out from her daughter's mouth. Why? Did Uncle Dimple lie to you? Megan said after she turned to face Alice. He said that he doesn't have a girlfriend, but I just saw another girl in his house. He's lying to me. Alice frowned as she crossed her arms. Mom, you better leave him. Don't fall for his tricks. What was that? Does Connor have a girlfriend? And Alice just saw them together? I thought he was the best man in the world, Alice continued. I've even thought of him being my daddy. But now, I think he's the worst. Even Uncle Leaf is better than him, even if he's childish. At least he's good to me and Mom. Maybe I should just give Uncle Leaf another chance. Uncle Leaf was the nickname that Alice gave to the real Becky. Please, 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 please don't. You don't choose your daddy like that. Yet, in the midst of her screaming to herself, Megan suddenly thought of something. Wait, if Alice saw a woman in Connor's house, it could only be his weird sister, right? Alice must have mistaken her for his girlfriend. I think you've mistaken something, Megan said as she felt that she had to explain the situation. Uncle Dimple is really a good person, and he does not have a girlfriend. I can swear on that. As for Uncle Leaf, I think you should give up on him. I will never fall in love with him. Is it true that Uncle Dimple doesn't have a girlfriend? Alice asked in suspicion. But I saw a woman in his house. Is that woman tall, with big round eyes and very pretty? Megan asked. Yep. I know her, Megan laughed. She's Uncle Dimple's sister. I've met her before. It's all a mistake. Megan quickly took out her phone and showed Alice a picture that she took at the Wilson mansion to convince Alice. Is this the woman? Megan asked as she pointed to Layla. Yes, Alice nodded. Yep, that's his third sister, all right, Megan said. She began pointing to other people in the picture. This is Uncle Dimple's eldest sister, and this one is his second eldest sister. He has a total of three sisters. 
Alice finally believed her mother and the sadness in her heart was instantly cleared up. She regained her pure and cute expressions and pointed at other people in the photo. And who is this person? And this one too, she asked. This is Uncle Dimple's father and this is his mother. Megan introduced them to Alice. And this old man here is his grandfather. Wow, Alice exclaimed. Uncle Dimple's family is really huge. He must have been very happy to have so many sisters by his side. Actually, he's not, Megan said. Why's that? Because he's in the wheelchair and he can't walk, Megan said. Everyone is making fun of him, saying that he's crippled and that he can't find a girlfriend. And now you thought he did something he didn't do. There's no way he could be happy, right? I've done something bad to Uncle Dimple, haven't I? Alice pouted. Mom, let's go back to Uncle Dimple's house. I want to make him happy. Okay. Megan turned the car around and drove back to Brooklyn Heights. When they arrived back at the luxurious building, Megan did not let Alice out first and instead sent a message to Connor asking whether he was home or not. Episode 146, A Kiss of Gratitude Yep, I'm home. Where are you? Connor replied. Is Cherry Baby with you? How is she? It was clear that Connor was worried about Alice. I'm at the building gate. Can I go to your house now? Connor did not reply and went straight to the gate to get them. The gate opened and a man in a wheelchair came out. Alice noticed Connor coming out from the building and struggled free of her mother's hand. She ran straight into Connor's arms. Uncle Dimple. Cherry baby, Connor said as he picked Alice up. Alice cuddled up in his arms as Connor patted her head. Connor began to wonder why he would love Alice so much, even to the extent where he would miss her when she wasn't around. Megan stood not far from them as she looked at the father and daughter cuddling each other. Even if they didn't know of their relationship, the affection they showed towards each other was real. Megan sighed in her head. Did you come and look for me just now? Connor asked as he let Alice rest on his legs. Yep, Alice nodded. Why are your eyes so red? Did you cry? Connor asked. No, Alice replied, shaking her head. It's the sun. It's making my eyes sweat too. Alice even tried to fan herself with her own hand. It was Connor's first time hearing eyes could sweat. He knew the little girl didn't want to talk about it and didn't question her any further. Then how about I treat you to some ice cream? Connor asked. Yay! Alice smiled as she clapped her hands. Mom, hurry up and come over. Megan came to their side and her eyes met Connor's. They both smiled at each other and Megan pushed him back into the apartment. Megan opened the door to room 101 and Alice peeked her head into the house. Is that auntie gone? Alice asked. Yep, Connor nodded and took out a pair of small slippers. Here, cherry baby, these are for you. They're so cute, Alice exclaimed as she looked at the cute little pigs on them. Did you get them for me? Even though her mother had told her about the slippers, she was still surprised when she got them. Yep, Connor smiled. Try them on. Alice slid down from Connor's lap and put on the slippers. They're so pretty, Alice smiled. I love them. Thank you, Uncle Dimple. You're the best. Alice jumped back up onto his lap and gave Connor a kiss on his cheek. Connor couldn't help but jump for joy in his head. He'd even gotten a kiss as a thank you from the little girl. Oh God, you're going to spoil me. Connor invited both beauties into his house. It was Alice's first time visiting his home, and she ran back and forth. Uncle Dimple, Alice called out while touching a wall. Is it true that 101 and 102 are only separated by a wall? Yep, Connor replied. I think this design is stupid, Alice frowned. Oh? Connor raised an eyebrow and asked, why is that? Why can't we remove this wall? Alice asked with her head tilted. Then I could see Uncle Dimple from the next house, too. Oh my, you're so considerate. I really wanted to do so, but I'm afraid your mom wouldn't agree to that. Well, you can still see me whenever you want without taking the wall down, Connor explained. You can come over whenever you want. 
But it's so troublesome, Alice said. Why can't we build a door here? Like that, I can come back and forth. That is a good idea, but I'm not sure if I should do that or not. Connor pondered in his head. Alice was trying her best to get Connor and her mother closer together. It was as if she was trying to tell him to go for Megan right away. I think that's a good idea. Megan suddenly came in and said while holding three ice cream cones in her hands. It would be easier if there was a door here. Mommy is right. Alice agreed in her head as she kept nodding. Connor turned his head and looked at Megan. Am I hearing things? Did she just suggest that we should build a door here? Isn't that like having a secret relationship or something? I'm serious, Mr. Wilson, Megan said as she handed one of the ice cream cones to Alice. It is quite troublesome to go through the front door every time. It would be easier for me to get into your house if we had a door here. Connor was already celebrating in his head, but kept on a poker face. But is that really good? Connor asked. I mean, you are a single lady and I... We could just make it less suspicious, Megan suggested. Like building something to cover the door up and only the three of us know about it. Megan could not care less about her image. She was doing everything to get closer to her Prince Charming. If Connor were to decline her offer, she would definitely get angry. Uncle Dimple, can we build the door? A huge door, Alice said as she drew a huge door on the wall. Oh, okay then. I'll ask someone to take care of it tomorrow, Connor said. There was no way that he could decline such a beneficial offer from both of the ladies. Oh yeah, Megan screamed in her head. Connor made a call to James and had him handle the door right away. Episode 147, The Life She Wanted Connor hung up his phone and looked at Megan and Alice. Both of you must be tired. Why don't you two have a rest first, Connor said. I'll go prepare the dinner. Let me do it. Megan said as she saw Connor was about to head to the kitchen. Don't worry, Connor said. I can take care of it. He had been teaching Layla for the whole afternoon, and there were still some ingredients left. He could whip up a meal in no time. Alice heard that Connor could cook and rested her head on his wheelchair's handle while staring at him with her starry eyes. Uncle Dimple, you can cook too? Alice asked. Wow, I really like men who can cook. Men who can cook definitely scored better than those who couldn't. All that Alice hoped for was that her mother and Connor could maintain how they were and become a couple as soon as possible. If that happened, it meant that she could have a father in the future. Connor went to the kitchen while Megan took Alice to the couch. They had been playing for the whole day, and Megan could feel soreness in her legs. She planned to rest for a while, and didn't expect herself to fall asleep the instant she hit the couch. Connor had finished preparing the dinner and placed the meal on the dining table. Just as he was about to call Megan and Alice over to eat, he saw that both ladies were hugging each other and sleeping soundly on the couch. There was no way that Connor would call both of them up when they were sleeping so peacefully, which was why he did not disturb them. Since the AC was on, Connor was afraid they might catch a cold. He went into his room and grabbed a blanket for them. Even though Connor tried to put the blanket over them with the slightest movement, Megan still woke up from it. She opened her eyes and saw that Connor was putting a blanket on her. At that moment, all she could feel was warmth inside her heart. The little girl also woke up from it. Daddy, the little girl said with her eyes barely opened, is the dinner ready? I'm hungry. Connor shook a little from hearing Alice calling him daddy. For one second there, he thought Alice really was his daughter. No, there's no way that I would get such a clever daughter. She only called me that because she misses her father. Yes, Connor smiled as he rubbed Alice's head. We can eat now. Alice got up from the couch and extended her arms. Connor picked her up and wheeled them to the dining room. Alice washed her hands and climbed onto a chair. 
Wow, Alice gasped at the various foods on the table. So many foods. You're the best, Uncle Dimple. One hundred marks from me. Yep, one hundred from me, too. Megan smiled. Thank you, Connor blushed. I am happy to hear those words. Connor looked at both of them with his gentle eyes. Alice ate everything on the table. She loved the foods that Connor had made. She kept complimenting him while stuffing her mouth with food. Megan looked at the scene and could only feel a surge of happiness in her. This was the life she wanted, a husband and a child, all three of them living a happy life. After dinner, Megan took Alice back to room 102 to put her to sleep. Megan still had to go back to 101 to perform acupuncture on Connor. Yet, after they had showered, the little girl kept nudging her mother that she wanted to go over to 101 too. Megan could only comply and brought her along. Connor finished his shower and was surprised by the two ladies sitting in his living room. Both of them were wearing the same clothes, fitting for mother and daughter. Still haven't slept? Connor asked. Alice heard his voice and got up from the couch. Uncle Dimple, can you tell me a story? She asked. I can't sleep without a story. The kid kept nudging me about it, Megan explained. I had no choice but to bring her over too. Of course, Connor said, happy that he still had time to spend with the little girl. What kind of story do you like? Anything. Alice smiled. As long as it's from Uncle Dimple, I'll definitely love it. Alice liked Connor's voice the most. It was a pleasure for her to listen to it. All right, come on, Connor said, opening his arms. Alice climbed over the couch and landed in his arms. How about a story named Ugly Concubine? Connor asked. Okay. Alice smiled while clapping her hands. I want to listen to it on the bed. Sure, Connor said, and was about to turn into his bedroom. Mom, push us, Alice said as she was trying to give them a chance to intensify their relationship. Okay, Megan smiled and kept praising her smart daughter in her head. As soon as they entered the bedroom, Alice quickly climbed onto the bed and lay in the middle. Uncle Dimple, over here, Alice called out. Do you need me to help you? Megan asked as Connor turned to look at her. It's all right, Connor said and wheeled himself to the side of the bed. He grabbed the handle that was specially built beside the bed and pulled himself onto it. Connor was used to doing it every day, and it came so naturally that other people wouldn't even notice that he was crippled. Connor and Alice were both lying on the bed when Alice patted the bed on her other side. Mom, over here. Alice smiled. Wait, what? Is that appropriate? Even though Megan wanted to jump straight onto the bed and into Connor's arm, she still tried to keep her inner beast down. She was afraid that she might scare him if she was too straightforward. I don't think that's a good idea. Megan blushed as if she was a teenage girl in love. Oh my god. Alice was already screaming in her head. Come on, mummy. I'm trying to give you a chance here. What are you doing? Don't you like Uncle Dimple? I really like him. I'm so pitiful, Alice began to fake a cry. I've never had a father since I was born, and Mommy doesn't have the time to accompany me because she has to make a living. Episode 148, The Warmest Night I want to be like other kids who have their mother and father tell them stories before they sleep, Alice cried. Mom... Uncle Dimple, can you help me? There was no way anyone could say no to such a cute little crying girl. Megan, why don't you come up too? Connor said while trying to wipe the tears off Alice's face with a tissue. She looks like she's really sad about it. That's what I'm waiting for, Megan celebrated in her head. Megan was trying to hold in her smile as she kept praising her daughter in her head. All right, Megan said. Don't cry, okay? I'm coming. And with that, Megan was lying on the same bed as Connor. Connor started to tell his story with his deep voice as if he was a live cello. The attractive voice made the story more interesting than ever. 
Megan and Alice kept staring at his face while he spoke, immersing themselves in his voice. It was the warmest night that Connor had felt for the past few years. How much he hoped that he could continue to tell the story that Megan and Alice could stay by his side forever. Sandra was sitting in her apartment with rage and evil plans in her head. She sat on her couch with a cigarette in one hand and a wine glass in the other. So, you're telling me that Jordan is still unconscious? She asked. Yes, Elena replied. We'll be in trouble if he wakes up, Sandra said. Since he did not do anything to Megan, we can just pay him off, Elena said. I don't think he will betray us. We should just leave it as it is. Oh, and we can get the doctor's proof that your wrist is already healed by tomorrow, and you can get back to the set. Megan will have to leave by then. Plus, she's just a small stunt double. There's no way she could be compared to you. You shouldn't ruin your career for some nobody. Elena was trying to persuade Sandra to stop what she was doing. Yet, Sandra wasn't going to let it go that easily. Megan had hurt her pride, and there was no way that she would let Megan off the hook. Get that proof. Sandra scolded. There's no way I'm going to let her go so easily. Oh, we shouldn't be careless about Jordan either. Go and take care of this for me. Sandra whispered into Elena's ear, and she sighed. She didn't want to do what she had ordered, but he could not disobey her either. Megan woke up early on Monday and took Alice back to the Johnson mansion before she went to the set. Because Miley had taken a few days off, Megan would be focusing her work on Root of Evil. Megan got to the set and heard that Jordan was out of danger, but was still in the ICU. Jordan was lucky that he had even survived. The studio had already compensated Jordan with a huge sum of money. They'd also conducted an investigation and found out that the flour was mixed with arsenic trioxide. The only thing they weren't sure of was whether the person who had bought the flour was also the one who mixed it in there or not. Everything was conducted privately, and the public had no idea that an accident had occurred on stage. All of the staff members thought that the incident would be settled very quickly, but no one had expected that the poison was just the tip of the iceberg. Just as Megan and Chris were shooting a scene in the morning, a few policemen barged onto the set suddenly. Since Root of Evil was a detective drama, a few of the actors were wearing police uniforms, and no one noticed that real policemen had arrived on the scene. One of the policemen ordered everyone to stop what they were doing. What the hell? Justin scolded as he thought they were actors. Who told you to do that? Can't you see the camera is still rolling? Nice to meet you, Team Captain Gomes said as he flashed his badge and a piece of paper. We're from the New York Police Department. We've received a report saying that someone here tried to poison one of your staff members. This is now a crime scene, and we'll be conducting our own search. This is our search warrant. Justin didn't know how to react to the sudden turn of events and remained silent. Shit. Are they the real deal? I thought we took care of everything. Who the hell talked to the police? After a few minutes, one of the police found the arsenic trioxide in the locker room. Just as Megan and Chris were talking at the side, Captain Gomes stopped in front of them. Are you Megan? Captain Gomes asked. We found this arsenic trioxide in your locker, and you're now a suspect. Please follow us back to the precinct. What? Could you repeat that? Megan said dumbfoundedly. Captain Gomes repeated the whole sentence, and Megan was finally sure that she did not hear it wrong. This must be a mistake. There's no way that belongs to me, 
Megan explained. Why would I even try to hurt Jordan? The incident happened last Friday. Do you think it would be normal for me to leave that in my locker waiting to be found? Megan was right. Everything seemed out of place. I think there must be some mistake, Chris stood up and said. I was there when Jordan was poisoned. If Megan had not saved him in time, he would be dead by now. Shouldn't you guys reward her instead of capturing her? I'm sorry, but this is still an investigation. I hope you will cooperate, Captain Gomes said. Take her away. Even if Megan was not cuffed, being escorted by two policemen still caused a huge uproar. With what proof are you charging her? Chris shouted as he stood in their way. Let her go. Episode 149. That's how black-hearted he is. Don't. Megan quickly stopped Chris from doing anything rash. I'm just going with them for some questioning. That's all. Captain Gomes, Justin said, this really must be some mistake. Megan has nothing to do with this. Can't you let her go? She's really innocent. I'm sorry, Director, Captain Gomes said. We're just doing our job. If the investigation proves that she's innocent, we'll let her go. And with that, Megan left with the policemen. As soon as they left, Chris quickly picked up his phone and called Samantha. Samantha immediately sprung into action. The first thing she did was report it to the big boss, and the second was rush to the precinct to get a grasp on the situation. Harvey leisurely walked to the CEO's office in Talent X Entertainment and sat on the couch. I want to go to the theme park again, Harvey sighed as he crossed his legs. That statement made Connor take a deep breath. If I had a cannon, I would just blast this guy to the Atlantic Ocean. How dare he boast in front of me? Looks like I'll have to put asking him about going after girls on hold. There's a case in New York City. Go and take care of it tomorrow, Connor said coldly. What? New York City? Harvey asked as he couldn't believe that Connor was sending him to a faraway city. You heard right, Connor replied without even batting an eyelid. This should take about three months. You'll have to stay there until I say so. Three months? Harvey screamed, jumping off the couch. Is he trying to exile me or what? Wait, doesn't that mean I can't see my beautiful wife and kid for three months? Man, I shouldn't have pissed him off. He's really black-hearted. Connor, can't we discuss? Harvey said, trying to plead. But before he could even finish his sentence, a call came in for Connor. Connor speaking, Connor said, picking up the phone. Harvey could only stand at the side and wait for his boss to finish his call. After the call went on, Harvey could see that Connor began to frown, and he had a bad feeling about what was about to happen. Megan is at the East Police Precinct, Connor told Harvey as soon as he hung up his call. Hurry up and go save her. What? Harvey had his mouth wide open. Megan is in trouble again? She really knows how to stir things up. Come on, boss. How long have you known her and you still keep cleaning up after her mess? Hurry up and go, Connor shouted as he threw a magazine at Harvey, who was standing still. Or else I'll cut your salary. Don't worry. I'll head over there and settle it right away, Harvey said as if he'd just received an order from the king. He rushed out of the office. He was willing to do anything as long as it didn't involve sending him away for three months, and the incident with Megan had just come in time. With Megan being taken into custody, news about Jordan being poisoned spread online with pictures from on stage and pictures of his face. The news wasn't going to be huge if it stayed as it was, but the author of the pictures pointed the blame towards Megan. Some even mentioned that Megan was trying to take her revenge on Jordan. They even posted pictures of her being taken away by police. Just as one scandal was ending, another began for Megan.
In just a short time, Megan was the most searched again, and people were commenting bad things about her with hateful hashtags. Hashtag root of evil props master poisoned. Hashtag Megan suspected. Hashtag Megan caught. Hashtag Jordan disfigured. Hashtag Megan love triangle. Netizens began to discuss the incident as Megan had just walked off a huge scandal not long before. Who is Jordan? Megan's ex? What a vile woman. Is she trying to ruin her career? Were they in a relationship? Does anyone know the truth? Man, I've never liked her before and now she's making it worse. What a scheming woman. She abandoned Jordan just to be with Connor, and now she's trying to get rid of her ex with poison. I thought she was working on red-sleeved beauty. Why is she with Connor there now? I heard that she was a stunt double for Sandra there. She must have been trying to get rid of Sandra for the leading spot. Sandra was jumping up and down as soon as she saw that the whole thing with Megan elevated. Netizens were always the crowd who would believe anything people threw online without even using a fraction of their brains to think. Some of the netizens were trying to investigate what had really happened that day, but no one really cared about the truth. Sandra couldn't help but be amazed by her own intellect. Everything that had happened was orchestrated by her. She was the one who had ordered Elena to put poison in Megan's locker, and she was also responsible for spreading the news online. Even the picture of Megan being taken away by the police had been posted by her. She'd been very cautious in handling every detail. There was no way that the blame would fall on her. With her plan, she could eliminate Megan as her opponent and make it hard for her to regain her fame. There was no way that Sandra would give Megan any chance to climb back up to the spot she was at since one of Sandra's benefactors was Sean Parker, New York's chief of police. If she wanted to, she could put an attempted murder charge around Megan's neck and call it a day. If Jordan were to die because of the poison, how would the world look at Megan? Would the entertainment business allow a murderer to stay? Even if Megan were to walk out of the incident unharmed, the fact that she was taken away by the police was enough to tarnish her name. Episode 150, Beg for Her to Return. After Sandra saw the news, she quickly called her manager and asked him to find someone to settle the issue of Jordan. She also asked him to hand over her doctor's proof to Justin the next day. She was so sure that Justin would have to beg her to return if he wanted to finish making the show. Megan was being interrogated in the interrogation room at East New York Police Department. Opposite her sat two police officers. One was interrogating her, and the other was recording the whole conversation. Megan had told the police everything that she could remember about that day, but they remained suspicious of her. If what you've said is true, then how can you explain that vial of poison found in your locker? The police officer asked. I've already explained it to you three times, Megan sighed. I'm not the one who poisoned Jordan, and I don't know why that poison was in my locker. If you don't believe me, you can check the camera. We did, the officer replied, but... The footage for that day was wiped off. Then I have nothing else to say, Megan said. If there's no footage, then I don't have anything to prove my innocence. But I'm not going to just sit by and let you guys blame me for something I haven't done. Just as the interrogation was coming to a stall, another person came into the room and whispered something into the interrogating officer's ear. Megan... The interrogation officer said, after nodding to the office who just came in, Your friend is here for you. Friend? 
Megan asked in her head. Is it Chris? Megan was brought to another room, and in there sat Samantha. Megan, Samantha said as soon as she saw Megan. How are you? Are they treating you well? I'm fine, Megan replied as she forced a smile onto her face. I'm sorry for causing the company trouble again. Megan truly felt sorry for the company. Not only had she not earned the company a dime as their sole celebrity, but she even kept finding herself involved in scandals. It's all right, Samantha said. I believe you're innocent. I've already heard part of the story, and I'm thinking of ways to get you out now. We'll handle the PR later. Samantha rushed to the precinct as soon as she got Chris's call. She'd known Megan since they were little, so she knew that Megan would never do anything like poisoning someone. She believed that Megan must have gotten herself on the wrong side of certain powerful people during their shoot. Then, I'll be in your care. Don't put it like that. It's my fault for not protecting you as your manager should, Samantha said. Tell me the whole story. Maybe I can find some evidence to prove that you're innocent. Okay. Megan told Samantha everything that had happened that day without missing any details. The only thing Megan had left out was Sandra, since Megan wasn't even suspecting her, just like everyone else, since she wasn't at the set when the accident happened. After hearing the complete story, Samantha told Megan not to worry and to follow everything she said. Megan wasn't even worried about herself. She was more worried about the fact that she couldn't help Connor to his therapy if she were to be put in jail. Megan had made Samantha promise not to tell her grandfather, Alice, or Connor about the incident. She didn't want them to worry about her. But there was no way that Connor hadn't heard about it. Connor was the one who controlled the whole entertainment business. He would be the first to know if anything about Megan popped up online. Connor sat in his office with rage and killing intent in his eyes. He gripped his phone so tightly that his hand was getting pale, as if the screen was about to break under pressure. He'd seen the news about Megan that was posted online. Megan tried to poison Jordan. Megan caught for murder attempt. Connor couldn't believe the headlines that he'd seen. How dare they blame that on her? Who the hell has the nerve to frame her? Connor instantly ordered James to investigate the matter. With Connor's rage and James's talent, they could even find the needle in the haystack instantly. Being the boss of the whole entertainment business meant that Connor had infinite access to a vast amount of powers and connections. As long as he wanted something to happen, it would definitely happen. In just a few minutes, James returned back with the shots that were taken when the accident happened, and Connor went through the footage. The shot clearly showed that Jordan went to the set to check on the prop that was malfunctioning, and that the flower accidentally fell on him. It also showed that Megan was the first to react, spraying Jordan with water from the hose. She even performed emergency treatment for him. And if she hadn't, he wouldn't even have survived until the ambulance arrived. Megan was a Samaritan. There was no reason for people to put the blame on her. Unless someone was controlling the whole situation in the dark. Maybe the bag of flour was intended for Megan, but Jordan took the fall. Connor concluded, There is no pure accident. Someone was trying to harm Megan. But who? Who wants to harm her? We have to find out who is the one pulling strings in order to clear her name. Connor took out his phone and quickly ordered James to do a few things. The first was to hand the shot that he just got over to Samantha for further PR purposes. The second was to go to the hospital and wait for Jordan to wake up. The third was to have Harvey go to the precinct as Megan's lawyer and get her out. Even though Connor couldn't do anything in broad daylight, he still had the power to control everything from the dark. Megan rested her head on the wall while she sat on the bed in the holding cell. Tons of things were going through her mind. Her phone had been taken away, and she had no method of understanding the situation that was going on outside. 
What if Grandpa knew about this? He would be worried. Connor, too. Does he know about it already? Is Jordan still unconscious? Megan could only put her hopes in Jordan waking up. Jordan was the only one who knew about the prop, as he was the one who set it up. Only his words could prove her innocence. The hospital was quiet when the night fell, and one could even hear a needle drop on the floor of the ICU. A nurse walked out of the pharmacy suspiciously. She turned her head both ways to check that the coast was clear and went to the ICU with a tray of medicine.